Hey, it's Dan from Part Shop Max. This is a 17-year-old brand providing steering, chassis, and suspension parts for drift cars. For me personally, going back 25 years, I have experience with fiberglass aero and building cars for a long time. I decided to try something new and show the build series on YouTube. As for the appearance, I have the ability to design and produce exterior parts introduced recently on Instagram at Flow State Automation. Although I wasn't personally interested in the pre-facelift Model 3, I had a buddy with the 2023 that let me borrow it for 3D scanning. The way I prep for a 3D scan is first, I put the car on jack stands so that it can't move. Then I cover the entire thing in spray powder. Light matte colors are easier for the sensor to pick up. Dark colors absorb the laser light. Shiny surfaces cause reflections where the light bounces off the surface. The biggest thing that I was curious about exactly what is similar and what's different between the 2017 to 2023 versus the facelift 2024 and newer models. It takes around seven or eight setups of the scanner to scan a complete car. And this is days worth of work. And it's many more days worth of work just to process the data. I might be a little jealous of the Creaform guys looking so relaxed, but the Pharaoh's what I got, so that's what I'm using. After the 3D scanning laser data is acquired in the form of a point cloud, I go about the long process of making sure that all the different positions that the laser scanner has been in has some overlapping area, which allows for alignment of the complete car's data. Once that's aligned, then I can actually make a mesh, and upon the mesh, I can build creative shapes for exterior panels. One of the most critical parts of that data preparation is finding the mirror plane because I actually only design on half the car. So originally, it seems like we were getting too much positive data on the red end of the spectrum, so I actually adjusted the mirror plane, so now we have equal amounts of blue and red, and I'm finally satisfied with the mirror plane and can start my creative work. The signature styling of the Flow State Automation project is a 50 millimeter over fender wide body with step lip and skirt. The entire car is being laid out in a subdivision surface on the mesh data. Even though I'm not doing any creative work on the door, if I can find the time, I like to do the entire car in a subdivision surface because that lets me make photorealistic renders without the grainy texture of that mesh data making fireflies, especially around the, the edges and catching the light in the facets that are the nature of mesh data. So I start to lay down vertices on that mesh and then I start to make a grid. And the grid consists of quads and each quad is a NURBS surface patch. This is solid modeling that is good enough to set a CNC machining path on when we're making molds and fixtures for overlay panels, which we vacuum thermoform in-house. And the unique character that gives this glassy appearance and makes the light wash over this series of surface patches so perfectly is that they maintain tons of surface tension with adjacent patches. So in that way, we can say that they are tangent to each other and they are curvature continuous across the whole patch network. Because this is highly dependent on quads, in other words, squares or rectangles, um, whenever you have a situation where there's a primarily triangular shape on the car, such as where uh, the hood and the, the headlight or, or corner light on the fender meet together. This causes a huge challenge with this quad layout um, when things trying to try to get triangular, or if you have a certain situation where 
instead of four patches coming together at one vertex, if you have five, then this kind of undermines the perfection. In addition to all that, the tension of that surface of the subdivision, it tends to suck down below any convex mesh surfaces. So then I actually have to extend or offset normal to that surface in order to get it just right. It's quite a bit of work. I think that's enough for reverse engineering and modeling for now. Stay tuned to the next episode when I actually take delivery of my 24 Performance Model 3. I hope you will subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates at each step along the way.